So the, the wonderful thing you had in Paris was every country from, from, from China to Brazil to the U.S. Right. came in with a plan. Right. And they all agreed to abide by that plan. They're going to come together every five years, revisit the, the, the goals that they have set for this country uh, under the Obama administration and with this EPA. They've agreed to cut the that's CO2 great. emissions wow, by 28% by 2025. And that's they're huge. trying to do that through a plan called the Clean Power Plan, which I don't know whether you've had too much uh, exposure to it, but it was the most aggressive and I think creative way for this country to try and, um, how shall I say, comply, comply right. with the Paris Accord. Just so people understand why Paris was so important, the business community over the years, when I first started being involved, when I was representing the insulation mm -hmm. industry, before I was even involved with ESI, the business community's role at the climate conventions was really threefold. One, you were either like me, trying to right. sell what your products do right. to the delegates and the concept of make sure efficiency is in any agreement as a required uh, protocol. Secondly, there were those from the fossil fuel and other industry groups who were trying who to stop. Trying to stop it. Right, right. And we, we know, know, and they we were very successful very, very for successful. Quite, a, quite a long period of time. In the 90s. And then there were yeah. independent consultants selling their, right. their expertise to both sides. Right. Um, fast forward to Paris, you had walking across Le Bourget, the old airport uh, uh, grounds where they, where they actually had the, the, the meeting, the meeting, you had CEOs of various companies that have said, we understand what the problem is. We're going to use uh, the technologies, whether it's Nike or whether North Face, uh, Starbucks, uh, United Technology. You're talking about mainstream companies that have said, we can do combined heat and power. We can use solar. You know, we, we can do all sorts of efficiency things. We can reduce our, our emissions of CO2 emissions. And uh, it's, it's working. It's very exciting. The country, under uh, the last uh, seven, eight years, I think has done an awful lot, just not from regulatory process, but companies have made decisions. Yeah, innov innovative. I In mean, innovative decisions. And a, dis a business decision process. That's really. the key point. It's the key point. Seeing. The business is the business. It's the business aspect. decisions. Yeah, Walmart absolutely. has decided that they want all their buildings to be compliant with right. the U.S. Green Building's uh, highest energy efficiency standards because they've decided they save a lot of money. And they also want to present, remember, People right. out, your viewers, they want to be part of, a, of the solution, all right? And so the reason that, that this country can take steps that don't necessarily have to be regulatory and, 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 and compulsory is because people want to do the right thing. And if you look at how uh, businesses are um, renting new space, and they're all looking for green construction. Right. They want to do the right thing. There have been data points that have shown that productivity goes up when a building mm -hmm. has been uh, a green construction. Really? They actually, productivity? Productivity. Up. They actually have data wow. points in hospitals when there's energy efficiency and green construction in hospitals that people, people, people get better, get, get better faster, really? that pain, uh, pain medicine is used less frequently. What we, it's fascinating. It is fascinating. I know that. I did not. Yeah. Wow. And what we're able to do in the construction area, because buildings are 40%, of the CO2 emissions, the right. energy usage in this country. And so if we can make buildings more energy efficient through thermal performance, uh, through the windows, through the walls, through the roofs, um, we can do an awful lot to reduce energy use by that way. Um, the use of distributed generation, by that I mean, can we put solar panels on a rooftop? Right. Can we have what's called microgrids in a community instead of having to trans transmit right. uh, electricity right. from far, far away, can we generate electricity right there? Right. We have done an amazing job in this country disconnecting our productivity as a country from the energy we use. In right. fact, from 2007 to 2015, the economy grew by 10 percent, but we reduced our energy usage by 2 percent. We've never huge. done that before. We've never done, right, right. So, speaking of electricity, yeah. what has the industry done to restructure itself? Well, you know, the, the electricity industry itself is kind of like a hundred-year-old, it's a hundred-year-old um, model. In fact, if Thomas Edison came back today, think for, he, would, he, he would recognize it. And that tells you something. And, but it's, it, there, oh, there are changes that are occurring. You have um, uh, certain utilities that are actually investing a lot of money in energy efficiency. Right. 
um, frankly, five to six billion dollars last year by, by utilities alone on energy efficiency. Oh, they great. recognize yeah. they need to, to do that. Um, there are utilities that are, in fact, looking at using um, smaller solar thermal generating units to be able to generate yeah. electricity. Um, but the concept of being able to, for you as a community to be a master of your own fate, let's say there is a bad uh, storm. There needs to be a way to be able to ensure nat for your energy security, electricity security, right. to generate it somewhere close to you. So I think the trend is uh, for, for wind and solar, uh, geothermal, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to do that in a more localized manner and not have to transmit it over uh, hundreds of miles. It also is a challenge as we move towards renewable, uh, renewable right. energy to be able to have the tra transmission lines. One of the biggest impediments, yep. you, yes. you, you, you know, that most people don't want transmission lines. You know the expression about not in my backyard, uh, NIMBY. Right, right. Well, I have a new expression. It's called banana. What is banana? Build absolutely nothing anywhere near anybody. <laughs> I love it. So where's that going to be? <laughs> so the, the problem we have, <clears throat> excuse me, the problem we have is many, many people don't recognize that there's going to have to be some sacrifices. Some, right, and some, take some responsibility. We're going to take some responsibility yeah. that if we have transmission, we're, somebody's going to have to agree that their land is going to have to be right. able to be available for that. ESI was founded to make, to make a difference at the, at the federal level. We do briefings for Congress on energy efficiency, right. renewables, on, on climate issues, on biofuels, mm -hmm. on sustainable transportation. I mean, we do 20, 25, 20 to 25 briefings a year wow, um, for congressional staff. And we usually that's have 100, huge. 150 uh, staff that's attending. enormous work. Yeah. But there are areas in Washington and in this country that you leverage your participation and your, your impact by working with other organizations. Right. And one of the most effective I have found over the years was EESI. So EESI. So they, they've been existing how many years? They've been 30 years. 30 they, years. They wow. were... They were the visionary product of members of Congress in the mid-80s when co members of Congress were talking right, with each right. other from both sides decided they needed a nonpartisan forum to develop solutions to critical energy and environmental issues. I, I couldn't go without saying that we couldn't do some of the things that we do at ESI without people's support. We get financial support not from the government of the United States, not from Congress, mm -hmm. but we get uh, contributions. And to the extent that anybody has an interest in, in supporting what we do, Right. Going on our website, www.eesi.org. Yeah, do pitch. Yeah, do pitch. You're fine. Uh, You're we welcome. Would, we would love to have them participate. Right. And uh, any questions, you know, we, we can certainly take uh, questions at EESI but through the email or just give us a call.